Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Vita Studio and today a quick video to share with you a free sample from our Tutorial Toolkit 2.0 pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so you can download that sample by clicking the link in the description below. It will give you this zip file, just double click on it to unzip it. Then you will get this folder. In the folder, you have a couple of things. You get the license, the installation instruction, the GFX file, and the font. Please make sure to install all the font, otherwise the title will not work because DaVinci will not know what font to use. So select all the font and then double click on them to start the installation process. Then you can go to the GFX file and double click on it. It will prompt open that window asking you if you wanted to install the DRFX, select install. In my case, it's written override because I already have that DRFX file installed. So just click that and then you can go over to DaVinci Resolve. Once in DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to effect, then title, Editor studio, open that up and then you can scroll down all the way to sample. And then if you have already some sample from us, you'll have uh, all of them right there plus the new tutorial toolkit 2.0. So then you can drag that into your timeline. And now let's just go through what you can do with this. So first let's play it. As you can see, it's used to display a before and after, or basically any image in two sequence. So right now I'm using it to display a before and after editing image. So you see the before is overexposed and then the after is properly exposed. You can use this for a variety of scenario that we're going to see in this video. But first off, let's go through the inspector and let me show you what you can do with that title. The first thing that you need to know is that you have a lot of control for the animation. Right now, by default, the animation length in second is two seconds, meaning that it takes two seconds for the animation to come to completion and that it will take two seconds for the animation out to be completed as well. You can adjust that easily if you want to have it go faster or slower. So here, for example, if I want it to be only half a second, I can do that, put half a second right there, and now the animation is a lot faster. By the way, right now, you may have noticed that sometimes I may drop a few frames uh, on the first playthrough. So if you want to make sure to get the best playback possible, go over to playback, then here go to render cache and make sure to select smart instead of none. That's just going to basically cache in the title whenever you've played already once. It's going to just uh, go from red to blue. And when it's fully blue, that means you're going to get real time playback here at 30 FPS, for example. Now you can also choose between multiple animation for the animation in and the animation out. So here we have none, zoom in, zoom out, pan left, pan right, slide up, slide down and fade in. And it's the same thing here for the animation out. You can also choose your animation out length. So if you want the animation out length to be longer than the animation in, you can adjust that right here. It's the same principle. Now, right now, by default, it's zoom in. But let's say here I'm selecting uh, slide down. As you can see now, it's coming from top to bottom. We have an animation intensity slider. It's basically the intensity of that movement. By default, I think it's better uh, when it's fairly subtle at 0.2. But if you want to have something that is a bit more pronounced, so here I'm going to go at 0.7 to really show you how much that affecting the movement. Right now, when we're playing it, as you can see in cooperation, the title is coming from the edges of the frame compared to, you know, slightly from the center. Let's go back to 02 so I can just show you the difference. Now, as you can see from 02, it's coming, you know, from the center only and fading slowly. And from 07, that was like outside of the frame. So you can play around with that depending on the kind of movement that you want. You also have the possibility to adjust the animation curve. So you can select between a different type of curve to get different kind of animation. By default, I like to use Expo or scene, uh, but you can have like an elastic or bounce animation here. If we select bounce, as you can see, the image is going to bounce when it's going to come into frame. So here we have a few drop down. We have the size and position, the image, the line slider and the text. So first, let's start with the overall size and position. You know, as usual, you can basically uh, input any position you want to move it around the frame. You can adjust the size reducing it or increasing it. And that's just going to affect the entire composition. So 
uh, that's for the size and position. Then we have the image. So basically here we have the before image and the after image. Um, I can here select a browse and you can then import any image you want directly from there. So here I'm going to import this one, for example. As you can see, it's not filling up the frame. So I'm going to increase the size. Here we go. And now we have the entire image filling up uh, the size of the square. And then I'm going to go over here to browse for a second image. And I'm going to uh, bring another one right here. Now let's just go to after so we can see it. And we're going to do the same thing here and increase the size as well. Uh, you can adjust the color, etc. So then we have the line slider, which is basically that line that is uh, switching from the before after. So here you can adjust the thickness of that line, the soft edge, the color. And then finally, we have the text. By default, we use it as a before and after, but you can use it just to display a sequence of image or, for example, uh, a quick comparison or something like that. Uh, right now, for example, you could, uh, we have two images. We could put a city on the first one and then countryside on the other one or like beach on the other one. So here I'm just going to do uh, city and then we're going to do beach on the second one. Here we go. We have city coming in and then beach switching out. One thing to know is depending on what you write, you might have something poking out or that might not respect uh, exactly the border of the frame. So you can always adjust here the height of the frame to reduce it, for example, to cut out any excess that might be bothering. Or if you need to extend, for example, because your word is longer. So here, for example, if I write a long beach, as you can see, uh, now it's you know, obviously uh, reaching. So I'm going to extend the width, the box. Here we go. Um, so you can adjust that. You can adjust also the corner radius. So here, if we were to reduce that corner radius, we're going to get a straight corner. Uh, you can change the color of the background. You can change the color of the text and the font. And you can also adjust the size of the text by increasing it or decreasing it. Same for the tracking, line spacing, um, etc. And then that's pretty much it. This should be covering everything you need to know about that simple. I hope this video was helpful. If you really like those kind of title, we've just released a full pack called the Tutorial Toolkit 2.0, which contain a lot of uh, different title and assets uh, specifically tailored to edit how to videos and tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, you'll get everything you need to make, for example, YouTube videos. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Again, you can download this with the link in the description below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for that she resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.